I'm sure it's an S class, by the way. And a 2018 model, maybe, I think. You know, something tip top. You know, if you're really going to ask, make sure it's the top thing. You know, don't just say, oh, uh, why do I need a car? What car do you want? You know, they have not make it easy for us. And work hard to get one. You know, Mercedes is not going to drop from the ceiling somewhere here and say, oh, I'll take you. The guy came here. You know, you then have to wake you up and take you to the man hospital. <laughs> so, I'm allowed. So you are allowed to ask specifics. You are. But I want to show you one step higher. I want to show you one step higher. Let's take a quick look at another prophet of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I said I'll talk for 45 minutes. It's actually 30 minutes, 25 seconds. So it's still some time. There was another prophet of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, who went through a lot. He had, at the beginning, everything flowing. Allah blessed him with wealth. Allah blessed him with children, beautiful family. Allah blessed him with so much. And after a while, Allah took away one by one. This went, and then that went, and then the children went, and then his health went. Who was that Nabi? Who was that Prophet of Allah? Yes? Who was the Prophet of Allah? Ayyub, alayhi salam. In the English language, Job. May peace be upon him. Job. Ayyub, alayhi salam. There is a narration that says that at a certain point when he was not well, his wife told him, why don't you call out to Allah to alleviate your suffering? And he says, I'm embarrassed. Why? Because Allah gave me for so many years so much. And it was for so many years. Now my test has only been for less than one tenth of that time or a fraction of that time. And I must already call out to him. No, let me endure a little bit. But there came a stage when, subhanAllah, he called out. Ayyub, alayhi salam, called out in a unique way. So unique that I want to teach you something so that you can be inspired. Let's take a look at Surah Al-Anbiya, verse number 83. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Ayyub, alayhi salatu wa salam. وَأَيُّبَ إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الضُّرُّ وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ Remember when the Prophet Ayyub called out to Allah. He called out to his Rabb. Remember, why is Allah saying this? To teach us how to call out to him. He made mention of the other dua of Sulaiman alayhi salam. He made mention of a dua of Sulaiman alayhi salam in another place in the Quran where Sulaiman alayhi salam says, Oh Allah, I thank you or oh, grant me the ability to be thankful to you. Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'matak. Oh Allah, grant me the ability to be thankful to you for what you've bestowed upon myself and my parents. Who were his parents? Dawood alayhi salam. How is it? Subhanallah, gift of Allah upon Dawood, he was the dad. And Sulaiman was the son. A quick way of remembering it, the D is for dad, Dawood. And the S is for the son, Sulaiman. You'll never forget it again, right? That's how I remember it, by the way. <laughs> okay, so Subhanallah, he's making dua for his folks, for his parents. And here in Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah makes mention of the du'as of so many of the prophets. Go to Surah Al-Anbiya and look at it and look at the meanings of it and see the du'as that Allah makes mention of of the prophets, the supplications. They called out all of them. Allah says, was Zakariya ibn Adha. And Zakariya, the prophet of Allah who did not have offspring, he called out to Allah, oh Allah, don't leave me singular. Grant me offspring. And Allah says, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ يَحْيَا We answered his prayer and we gave him Yahya, the child, John, subhanallah. How many of us don't have children? May Allah bestow upon your children. Keep making the dua. Keep making it. Allah knows. He's waiting. He's watching. He knows the right time. But Ayyub alayhi salatu was salam was on another level. He did not ask Allah What to do? Did you hear what I said? He did not tell Allah what he wants. No. He didn't say, Oh Allah, I want you to do this for me. 
He did not say, Oh Allah, cure me. He didn't say that. He didn't say, Oh Allah, I'm going through health problems. He didn't say, Oh Allah, I have financial problems. He did not say, Oh Allah, I lost my children. He did not say that. Why? He knew that Allah knows better than him what happened to him. And he knew that Allah knows better than him what is to be done. So when I have a problem, who knows my problem better than me? Allah. When I want a solution, who knows which solution is the best? Myself or Allah? Allah. So if my faith is very strong, I just need to say, Oh Allah, you know what I'm going through and I know you're the greatest. Done. Did you hear that? Oh Allah, you know what I'm going through and I know you're the greatest. That's it. He was not tempted to say, Oh Allah, do this for me, do that for me. Allah says, you called out to us and he said, Masaniya Durru. Trouble has affected me. Harm has affected me. That's it. Oh Allah. Something negative has got to me. And you are the most merciful from amongst all those who have mercy. That's all. He didn't say, restore my health, give me back my children, do this to me, do that to me. No. He just says, oh Allah, what has happened to me, you know. The negative that has happened to me, you know. And I know you are the most merciful from amongst all those who have mercy. More merciful than a mother, more merciful than anyone. Allah says, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ فَكَشَفْنَا مَا بِهِ مِنْ We responded to him and we alleviated all the suffering that he was going through. That's another level. In fact, there is another prophet of Allah who did something similar. Can I tell you who? Same surah. A prophet called Yunus, Jonah. The one who was swallowed by the whale. The one who was swallowed by the whale. Yunus, Jonah. May peace be upon him. Alayhi salam. He was also known as Dhunnun. Why Dhunnun? Because Annun is the fish. Which means the man of the fish. Moments ago, Shaykh Muslim was saying, this man, that man, the shoelace man. Yes, this was the fish man. Allah calls him the fish man. Wow. Don't worry, he was not Guyanese by the way. <laughs> Um, but obviously it was, it was, it's meant in utmost respect, it's not derogatory. If it's derogatory, it's not allowed. It's not allowed. You know, fat man, fat man. <laughs> Don't you dare say fat woman. <laughs> so, the noon, Allah says, When he was upset and angry and he ran, he ran away or he went away and he thought Allah would not decree something upon him. Allah says he called out to Allah from the darkness of the belly of the whale, in the darkness of the water. He called out to Allah. What did he say? Did he say, oh Allah, I'm in the way, I'm stuck, help me. No, in actual fact he didn't say that. He didn't say that. Do you know one of the most powerful du'as? Is this du'a? La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimeen. Allah Akbar. Did you hear that? La What did he say? Oh Allah, I did wrong. None worthy of worship besides you. I have transgressed against myself. And there is none worthy of worship besides you. I declare my faith, my conviction in you. Do you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمْ We responded. 
we responded to him and we removed the distress that he had done. What was his supplication? He didn't make a big dua, oh Allah, I'm in the way, you know, as I was going, it swallowed me, you know, I got hurt when I entered, you know, something happened to me here, and so on, and now I don't know, it's dark here, what's going to happen about the food, and so oh Allah, help me. All of that, it's okay to call in that way, it's fine. You and I are weak, we can tell Allah, whatever, but you need to know, there is a level of conviction, whereby you know Allah knows much more than you. You just have to say, Oh Allah, you know what I'm going through and I know you will help me. Done. Done. But that requires conviction and wait for Allah. Keep on repeating it. No problem. Keep on repeating it with conviction. When the time is right, it will happen. So those are the examples I wanted to give you this evening. And I wanted to raise the issue of being inspired by the lessons or by the messengers and the lessons we learn from the way they supplicated, why they supplicated, how they also went through challenges. Ayyub alayhi salam, he had health problems more than any one of us here. Did he give up? No. He made him strong. He got closer to Allah. Really. When things happen negative in our lives, use that as an opportunity to get closer to Allah. When things happen positive in your life, use it to get closer to Allah. You suddenly have a beautiful deal worth millions. Don't do the wrong thing with that money. Don't. Something went right. You happen to marry the guy of your dreams. Remember, that's a gift of Allah. It's a test. He's going to test you. He's going to test you. When you have your wedding, do it nicely. Bear in mind, you're a Muslim. You have responsibilities unto your maker. The day of Eid, the day of happiness, what do you do? Make Allah happy to you, subhanAllah. Whatever you choose to do on that day, make sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased. So this, my brothers and sisters, happens to be how they call out to Allah. I've just given you an example of some of the messages. And I want to tell you, go back, read Surah Al-Anbiya. Allah speaks of all the prophets, including Nuh, Noah, may peace be upon him. Allah says, you know, a long time back, Noah called out to us as well. And we responded. We responded to Noah, we responded to everyone. We will respond to all of you too. But bear patience. Bear patience. Don't think that a few negative things in your life happen to be the end. Nothing is the end. The end will only come the day that Allah chooses for you and I to leave. Or the day that Allah chooses to end the whole of creation. SubhanAllah. Up to that time, you still have hope in Allah and his mercy. If you were to seek forgiveness, he would forgive you. If you were to ask him, he would grant you, he would give you. And I end by saying, brothers and sisters, you want the help of the Almighty, learn to help the creatures of the same Almighty. Remember that. You want Allah's help, help others and Allah will help you. You want Allah to reach out to you, reach out to others and Allah will reach out to you. You want goodness in your direction, be good to others and Allah will be good to you. You want help? Help others. Like I just said now, my brothers and sisters, remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives, there is no barrier. He can give you everything and anything at any time and every time. So have hope in His mercy right up to the end. Aqulu qawli hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Dr. Mufti Ismail. Brothers and sisters, you have listened very attentively to two inspiring and informative presentations. And these presentations were meant to help us that we can able to make corrections, we can able to make improvements in our lives. 
where Sheikh Musli spoke with us at the opening. He spoke on the issue of our togetherness, Muslim brotherhood and Muslim unity. And he cited three areas that acts as natural barriers and impediment to our togetherness. He mentioned the lack of knowledge. He mentioned our ego and our pride. And he made mention of our culture. He is coming from Canada. And he had mentioned that these are issues that affect Muslims worldwide. And it is no different here in Guyana. And in the end, he had made a passionate plea for us to strive in order to change our attitude, remove these impediments, and strive to have a better relationship. He had mentioned from Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made the believers brothers. We are brothers one unto the other, and we need to strive to improve this relationship. He mentioned that even if we're having a good relation, we must not be satisfied with that, but we must try to improve it and to be better. In the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his teachings are replete with advice of how we should be able to improve our togetherness. Brothers and sisters, this Ummah worldwide is being fragmented. And the time is now even more for us to remove those barriers and those impediments and strive that we can be able to enhance the togetherness and the strength of this Ummah. The strength of this Ummah depends largely in our togetherness and in our unity. Our second presenter started his presentation by alluding to the fact that as believers, we are all going to go through tests and trials from Allah. And he mentioned that this is a mercy from Allah that it brings us closer to Allah. If we were to tell someone outside of Islam that trials and hardship, they are a mercy from the Creator, they may not take it well. But this is one of the unique features in Islam. And Dr. Mufti Ismail meant had cited many of the messengers, he cited only a few, that many of the messengers, they went through trials, they went through difficulties, how they reacted, and this is a lesson for us. How must we react? We need to take the example of the prophets of Allah that he had cited. Brothers and sisters, we all go through difficulties in many, many forms. We go through tests and trials every day. We need to learn the appropriate method, how we react to these type of situations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Quran that we need to put our trust in Him. We need to rely upon Him. We need to look to Allah for help. And once we have this strong reliance in Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring help to us and Allah will bring help, possibly from sources that we may not necessarily be thinking about. As I said in the opening, these messages that we have here tonight, it is meant to inspire us and to help us. We must not only leave here lauding and complimenting the occasion that both speakers speak well. That's not enough. It needs to touch us and to see in what way from their presentations, we can able to improve our present selves. Inshallah, tomorrow night, both speakers will be here for the second part of our convention. And as I've said earlier, we are having vacant seats. Our organizers have made it free. Please come on time tomorrow. Those who are having tickets, you will be allowed to have all the seats in front. And for those who will be coming, inshallah, as I said, it's free. Come on time and you will be able to have seats. This is a sign of the generosity of our organizers. The organizers, uh, ROU Guyana, headed by our brother Muhammad Halim, our brother Fazal, our sister Alicia and others. On their behalf, 
I want to take this opportunity to thank every one of you for making the time and the sacrifice to be here this evening. I am quite certain that you have benefited and you have learned this afternoon. For all those who have contributed, sponsors and others, in making this event a success, I want on their behalf to thank you very much. Obviously, in a program of this magnitude, there have to be so much of individuals, so much of families and organizations coming together in order to pool resources to make it a reality, Allah stands first as our help. The names are much numerous for me to mention, and the few names that have been mentioned, well, it is not to the exclusion of many, many others who may have come together and assisted ROU Guyana in making our program a success tonight. Tomorrow, inshallah, it's at 7 o'clock, we are going to be here. Both speakers, both presenters are going to be here. So we invite you, inshallah, tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock. So, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah